Hello folks, welcome to the Dungeons & Dragons 5e class guide series. After they learned how to play Dungeons & Dragons 5e series ended, I received a lot of feedback from the comments. People have been asking me to create a series on D&D 5e classes and how to dungeon master. Yes, I do try to read all the comments in the video. And due to popular demand, I am creating a class guide series first. The class guide video will cover the classes in the 5th edition Player's Handbook and I will be highlighting one archetype associated with each class. I will talk about the class's role in the party, give you a level-by-level -level breakdown of the class, and wrap it up with general evaluation. So without further ado, we will begin the class guide series with the quintessential Dungeons & Dragons class, the Fighter. The fighters are warriors that rely on their physical prowess and mastery of armor and weaponry to dominate the battlefield. They are not like any other commoners or guards who have learned to swing a weapon or two. They are individuals who have dedicated their lives to their craft to the extent that they can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other classes that can accomplish miraculous feats. The common image of the fighter is a character who relies only on his raw strength and might, but that is not a wholly accurate representation of the class. Depending on how the fighters are built, they can be incredible archers, devastating wielders of heavy weaponry, or walking tanks. A strength-based fighter benefits more from using heavy weaponry and armor. Dexterity-based fighters, on the other hand, are better at utilizing ranged weapons, finesse weapons, and light armor. In a party, they are usually expected to be able to take a few attacks for the team to keep the more vulnerable team members safe. But DND is not a video game. And unlike online MMOs, monsters do not react predictably according to scripted code. If their intelligence or wisdom is high enough, the dungeon master can justifiably have them flank your party and fight cunningly. The fighter class is one of the most basic class in Dungeons & Dragons, yet it's also one of its most versatile. The archetype you choose at level 3 gives you a vastly different variation of the fighter. The Eldritch Knight, for example, can even cast a few spells. A distinctive feature of the fighter class is that they have the most number of ability score improvement, 7 as opposed to the common 5. Given that you can forgo ability improvement to get a feat, this gives them the option to either rapidly boost their abilities or further customization with feats. For this class guide, we are going to look at a champion archetype, and I will do a quick review of the others near the end of the video. Now let's break the fighter down by the level. The fighter's hit dice is D10 so they start with a healthy pool of 10 hit points before any modification from their constitution modifier. They also get the average of 6 hit points per level up before any bonuses or penalties are applied. They are proficient in all types of armor and shield, so they have many optional ways to improve their armor class. They also have proficiency in all simple and martial weapons, ranged and melee. Their saving throws are strength and constitution, so they have easier time to resist being forcibly moved and withstand spells that force them to make constitution saving throw. They also get two skills from the following options. As you can see, they are mostly adventuring skills. Given that they don't get any features that augment their social interactions either, they would make better action heroes than diplomats. At level 1, they get to choose a fighting star. This is a very significant bonus, which will strongly influence the way the class is played. That archery bonus, for example, makes them so much better at archery. They would want to use strange weapons whenever they can. Defense increases their armor class, making them harder to hit. As a result, more resilient. Dueling increases the damage they deal when wielding a melee weapon in one hand. It works even when they are holding a shield with the other hand, making it a great compromise dealing damage in melee for sword and board fighters. Great weapon fighting makes two-handed weapons devastating. Protection aids them in protecting allies and targets. Two weapon fighting lets them fight with two weapons more effectively. They also get the second win feature. It is activated using bonus action and they recover 1d10 plus the fighter's level of hit points. It can be used again after every short or long rest, so they should use it before short rest if they haven't already. At level 2, fighters get action surge. It allows them to take another standard action before the end of their turn. If the fighter can do extra attacks, like attacking 3 times after receiving the feature they will get at level 11, then they can attack 6 times in a turn. It is also a great source of damage burst for fighters, but you can also use it strategically, 
for other standard actions like dash or dodge. They can use the feature again after a short or long rest. At level 3, fighters start to branch off to one of their three different archetypes. Champion, in my opinion, is the simplest and the most beginner-friendly archetype. The Battlemaster adds a lot more depth to the class, and Eldritch Knight allows the fighter to cast some spells. For this guide, we will be using the Champion archetype. Keep watching until the end of the video for my review of the other archetypes. The Champion's improved critical lets them score critical hit on the roll of 19 and above for their weapon's attacks. It is not a flashy feature, but it is easy to understand. Half-Orcs with their Savage Attack racial traits benefits greatly from this feature. At level 4, fighters get their first ability score improvement. They can choose a feat instead of the improvement. At 5, they reach tier 2. Like most other classes, they get a powerful new feature when they graduate to another tier. Fighters get their first extra attack and that means they get to attack twice on their turn. This is pretty standard for a martial class and they get a massive spike to the amount of damage they can deal per round. At level 6, another ability score improvement. They could potentially be the first party member to max out an ability score to 20. At level 7, another martial archetype feature. So they get another feature exclusive to their chosen archetype. The champion get the remarkable athlete feature. The feature lets them add half their rounded up proficiency to any strength, dexterity, and constitution ability check that they are not already proficient with. It also increases their long jump distance. It will definitely help in the adventuring phase. Level 8. Another ability score improvement. They should consider getting a feat if they have already maxed out their most favored ability, like strength or dexterity. Level 9. They get the Indomitable feature. It allows them to re-roll a saving throw they have failed, but they have to use the new roll. It can be used again after a long rest. So this helps in their defense against spells, traps, and other effects that bypasses their armor class. At level 10, another martial archetype feature. The champion can choose another fighting style, making them a more versatile warrior. At level 11, graduating to tier 3, fighters get their second extra attack. This is unique to the fighter because they are the only class that can attack 3 times on their turn without using bonus action or other special enhancements. Level 12, another ability score improvement. From this level onwards, they just receive more of the class features we have already seen. They get another use of Indomitable at level 13, so you can use it 2 times before long rest. Due to the wording of the feature, you can't use the feature in succession if the saving throw roll activated by the Indomitable feature fails. Another ability score improvement at level 14. At level 15, the fighter get another martial archetype feature, and the champion gets the superior critical feature. It allows them to score critical hit with their weapon attacks when they roll 18 or above. Then, more of the same. At level 16, another ability score improvement. Remember that you can choose a feat instead to make the fighter more interesting. At 17, the fighter graduates to tier 4 and gets 2 uses of Action Surge and 3 uses of Indomitable. Unfortunately, Action Surge can only be used once a turn, so you don't get to attack 9 times in a row at level 17. Sorry. On level 18, the champion gets the Survivor class feature. When their hit points is at half the maximum or below, but not at zero, they regain 5 plus their constitution modifier hit points every turn. At 19, they get their 7th and the last ability score improvement. Finally, at the maximum level, level 20, they get their third extra attack, allowing them to attack 4 times in a turn with their standard action. If they use their action surge, they can attack 8 times in a turn. Yeah, that's massive. Alright, now let's move on to evaluating the class. Here are my ratings for the class and each archetype. In general, fighters have excellent potential to optimize their armor class, and they can get decent amount of hit points due to their hit dice size. Their distinctive class features are reusable after short rests, so they can last through long days with multiple encounters if they can get some short rests in between. The archetypes give them three distinct playstyles. The Battlemaster allows for a more tactical playstyle. Using their superiority dice that fuels their maneuvers, they can control the battlefield in the hand of capable players. They can feint, trip, and then attack their prone enemy, creating advantage for their melee attacking party members at the same time. However, they have a limited number of superiority dice. They can recover them after a short or long rest, but it is still a good idea to use them sparingly. The Eldritch Knight can cast spells, but their growth as a spellcaster 
is only about one third of a dedicated spellcaster's growth. The majority of the spells they can learn are limited to evocation and abjuration spells. It may seem lackluster, but remember that they are still fighters foremost. So they are tough, and that few odd spells can really enhance and complement their strength. I am sure that many of you have heard of the glass cannon spellcasters. With this archetype, you can play a full metal magic spewing tank. The champion fighter, as we have seen earlier, is quite simple compared to the other archetypes. However, it is the only fighter archetype that can take the defense and protection fighting style without having to multi-class and sacrifice the fighter's third extra attack at level 20. With the addition of the survival feature they get at level 18, they make a pretty good base to build a defensive fighter on. Admittedly, if you do the math, the improved critical does not improve the champion fighter's damage output as much as the battle masters in short bursts. But at least you won't run out of it since it is a passive feat that will always remain active. The fighters multi-class quite well with many other classes, and their multi-classing requirement is very easy to meet. You only need to have 13 strength or dexterity. Martial classes like Barbarian, Rogue, and Monk multi-class very well with the fighter. They have pretty good synergy going on, especially with the Barbarian. The Champion Fighter's Improved Critical is a very useful class feature to have for Barbarians so that they can activate more of their brutal criticals. It is also a popular class for some power gamers who wanted to play a spellcaster to start their first level as a fighter, so that they can get their higher starting hit points and heavy armor proficiency. But the starting levels will be pretty tough, because it usually takes a few levels to develop your ideal multi-class character. Alright friends, that's the Fighter class. To wrap it up, the fighter is a great class for players to start with. It is simple, doesn't take much to master, but leaves enough room for players to customize it to make it great. Thanks for watching the first DND 5e class guide episode. If there's anything here you don't understand, you can always rewatch the Learn How to Play Dungeons and Dragons 5e series. By the way, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell button for more videos like this. Before signing off, I would like to thank my patrons at Patreon for helping to make this series possible. If you like my work and would like to help the channel, please consider becoming a patron too. CJ, over and out.